leads us into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels administered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We gathered Ash Wednesday and began the 40 days of Lent. The palms that you brought in were burned last Sunday and placed on our forehead. And we were reminded that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. As we began these 40 days of Lent, it's a time of prayer, of fasting, and of almsgiving. This past Friday, uh, we celebrated not only the Stations of the Cross, down the Via Della Rosa, the road to Calvary, the place of the skull, uh, but we also celebrated Holy Mass. Uh, we had our fish fry. Uh, we've got some foods and desserts left over for after Mass. If you want to take those home, So what we are about today is Noah in the flood and also the temptation in the desert. The story of Noah uh, is a story of a covenant. There would never be another flood that would destroy all of humanity. Uh, it's interesting because there are stories in all of the ancient Near Eastern texts, the old ancient Babylonian, uh, the Chaldean, the Persian, uh, there's flood stories. It's a, it's a common story that is in that part of the world. So what we see here with Noah, uh, we see that God is always faithful. We see uh, going into the ark, uh, beautiful, our rectory parish conference room uh, has the beautiful brocade of the ark. It's a favorite Bible story for children and adults alike. And certainly God wanted to renew the face of the earth. There was a sign. And the sign would be the rainbow. And all of you know the beautiful uh, prisms, the colors of the rainbow. Uh, and sometimes we'll even see uh, a double rainbow after a, a rain or after a, a torrential uh, downpour. What we are about today as Jesus goes out into the desert, he's also with, uh, unlike creation, the story of uh, St. John Chrysostom has a lot of interesting uh, things to ponder about this. But he is with the wild beasts. Uh, you notice uh, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, uh, there was a disharmony. There was disunity. They were driven. Uh, everything went chaos. Uh, there was a, a very good relationship uh, at that time before all this happened. And so Jesus, uh, by going out into the desert, um, Satan would tempt him. Now you notice that Satan always likes to get us when we're tired. Uh, when we're hungry, when we're, uh, uh, you know, a little bit uh, under the weather, uh, when there's uh, catastrophe in our life. He always knows that vulnerable point when we're the weakest. And that's when he tries to do his nasty deeds. He tries to uh, get us to do things that we normally wouldn't do. And one of the things that's important uh, in our own spiritual life, uh, we all know uh, our weak point. Uh, that's why we don't go certain places. That's why we don't associate maybe with certain people. That's why we uh, don't go uh, even on the electronic media, uh, you know, late at night or when we're tired because we might tend to deviate and go someplace where we don't belong. And so that is important because Jesus is hungry. He fasted for 40 days. He's very hungry, and the devil knows that. And the, the devil tempts Jesus in a different way than he tempts us. Um, Jesus, of course, is without sin. He's conceived without sin. Uh, but it's very important for us to realize that the way the devil tempts Jesus is he wants him to use his powers as God. You know, And so that's how he gets at him. If you are the son of God, you're hungry. Take these stones and turn them into bread. If you are the Son of God, jump off this high parapet of the temple and angels will uh, just 
carry you and let you glide safely. If you are the Son of God, bow down and worship me, and I will give you all these kingdoms. And Jesus says, be gone, Satan. These are not yours to give. And so I think that it's important that we don't put ourselves into temptation. I think that as we make this Lenten journey, we have a great start. Uh, you know, we just had tremendous uh, moments of grace on Ash Wednesday and, of course, uh, last night also. But we're going to have these moments all during Lent. Every Monday evening, uh, we're going to get together uh, for Eucharistic adoration, for benediction, and for Vespers. We're going to do that at St. Anne's at 6. Then on Wednesday evenings, we're going to have Holy Mass, uh, Stations of the Cross, and we're going to, uh, all these uh, days, uh, the Sacrament of Reconciliation after uh, the Holy Hour. And then Friday, uh, we'll gather here at St. Mary, and we'll have Stations of the Cross and uh, Eucharistic Adoration, and I mean Mass, and then we'll have uh, confessions afterwards. You know, it's about not just me and Jesus. I had a wonderful teacher, uh, then became Cardinal Avery Dulles, and he says, some people say, uh, me and Jesus, the church know. Well, Jesus, we wouldn't know him were it not for the church. Uh, we can't find anything that he's written. I mean, of course, the gospel writers wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but we know Jesus through the, the apostles, through the evangelists. You know, all of us are called to be missionary disciples. All of us are called uh, to do our own stations of the cross, as we spoke of last night, uh, to go out of our way, to make a difference, to go places at least every once in a while that we are out of our comfort zone. And when we abstain, uh, we abstain from 14 until we die. Uh, somebody was asking me that, does it, you know, kind of expire? No, we abstain from meat on Fridays of Lent. And one of the things that, and we can abstain from meat, we should all the Fridays, unless we do some other corporal works of mercy or some acts of penance, because every Friday is a good Friday, a little reminiscence of that. So Friday has a special connotation. But I think even further beyond, uh, you know, the, the meat, uh, we should abstain from an obtuse spirit, from gossip, uh, from, uh, you know, bullying. We should abstain from an irascible temper, uh, a curmudgeon attitude. We should abstain from just being grouchy with everybody and uh, just wanting everybody to conform to uh, what we want. We should not place ourselves in the center, but Christ Jesus within ourselves in the center of us that ripples and has that beautiful effect. And so that's really what Lent's all about. It's ultimately a time of renewal. Uh, this little boxwood over here uh, under the Blessed Virgin Mary at uh, its place is really a sign of eternity. And that's what we should be thinking about. Our own mortality, we're dust and to dust we shall return. But because of the baptismal plunge, we plunge into all eternity when we uh, celebrate God in our lives. Uh, today, uh, I left and we had a, quite a, a busload of folks uh, at the Catholic uh, conference, uh, the beautiful uh, women's conference uh, there at the Ohio State Fairgrounds, and uh, uh, over 2,000 women, and there'll be over 2,000 men uh, this coming Saturday. I got there so I could greet everybody. I left here a little after 5 and arrived before 7, and uh, it was just a powerful experience. Over 50 priests were there, and uh, lots of deacons. And when I left, they were getting ready for Eucharistic adoration and benediction. Uh, and so the celebration continued. Uh, Bishop Campbell uh, was just absolutely uh, alive. Uh, the Mass this morning was at 8 o'clock. And it was very powerful because he had all of the different uh, religious women, uh, consecrated uh, religious, uh, stand. Uh, he had uh, just pulled us into that wonderful Mass, uh, and everybody's hearts were open. Ohio Dominican had their uh, singers there, their choir, and I tell you, I was distributing communion right in front of them. And literally, as I distributed communion uh, to all these women, um, I saw Jesus in them. And tears just started streaming down my eyes during the whole communion. And really, that's what's supposed to happen. 
uh, when our distributors distribute communion and, and the deacon and all. When we say uh, the body of Christ, it's the host, of course, but we're supposed to also see Christ uh, in the person that we're given the body of Christ 